Hello, this is the fourth short film explaining how t-tests work as part of the hypotheses test one lecture. And at the end of the last video, we had this formula for the z-score of a sample. And it is nearly very, very useful, except there's one flaw, which means that you can't use it at all without addressing the final problem, which is this. Imagine you go to a rural area and you do not know the mean rice yield in the rural area how are you going to know the standard deviation of the rice yields, which you need in the above formula? You don't know this, but you need to know this to use the formula. So it's useless as it stands. So the solution is you have to estimate this, which is the spread, the standard deviation of the original population by looking at your um, sample. So if you look at your sample and see that the, the numbers in your sample are very spread out, it means this is probably going to be quite large. The population is quite spread out. If your sample is very closely bunched together, then this is probably quite small. And the population standard deviation is small. More accurately, you estimate the population standard deviation by using the sample standard deviation. So you work out the standard deviation of your sample numbers and use that to estimate this. The final catch here is that you don't quite use the same formula as you might have been used to before. It's almost exactly the same method, except this time, instead of dividing by n, you divide by n minus 1. This is the formula here. This is actually the formula for the sample variance, because of this squared. After you've done this, you must remember to press square root to get the final sample standard deviation. So what you do here is you get your sample values. You work out the sample mean, which is that. And then you go through every single value in your sample and subtract that sample mean and square it. So you, and then you add them up. So you're adding up all the squared differences between each number and the sample mean. And then finally, you divide by n minus 1. So if you had a sample of size 10, you divide by 9, for example. And then you press squares. Now we have s, we can work out something that's more practical. Remember that the spread of the means when you take a sample is much less than the spread of the original population. And the spread of the means, the, the standard deviation of those possible sample means, is actually equal to the original standard deviation divided by the square root of n. We showed you that. Well, now we can estimate that by, instead of starting with the original standard deviation, which we don't know, we replace that with s. We divide s by the square root of n, and that gives our estimates for that standard deviation of the sample means, the standard error. Now, what we can do now is we can, we can measure how many standard deviations above a possible population mean we are for any sample mean. And that's called the t-value. Now that's easy to say, but it's hard to understand until you've seen a whole load of examples, which we will. So when you have random samples, this value that you get, the t-value, actually has a distribution that looks pretty much like normal to the naked eye, but it's just slightly more spread out. And the reason it's slightly more spread out is that we're having to add an extra layer of estimation. And instead of using the proper standard deviation of the population, which is unknown, we're estimating that. So that introduces a bit more uncertainty and makes it more spread out. So if we recap, for individual values, the z-score is this, just the difference between the, a, a, a possible value and the actual population mean divided by the standard deviation. When you move on to taking a sample, then we're looking at the difference between the sample mean and the population mean. And this time we divide by this, which is the original individual standard deviation divided by the square root of n, because it reduces when we take a sample. But then this is no good because we don't know this value here. So the final step is to replace that with this. So s divided by the square, and that's called the standard, standard error. s divided by the square root of n gives us a standard error. This is the standard deviation of the sample means. So this is looking at how many standard deviations of the sample means is this possible sample mean away from the overall population mean. And that gives us what we call a t-value. Now, as I said, difficult to follow all the steps of that in one, but to actually apply it uh, is more straightforward, I hope. And we'll have lots of examples of working this out and using it in the lectures and examples and problems. So thanks for watching.